Assurance gives us this capability of having something called network time travel. And it is literally as cool as it sounds. Point. Great point. So when we start talking about troubleshooting, we have to understand why and how Assurance works in the first place, right? So I mentioned that, you know, as a software-defined controller, this device, DNA Center, sits above the whole network, and it, which is great from an automation perspective. It's also awesome from a telemetry perspective. All these different devices that you have in your environment currently, whether they're routing, switching, wireless, whatever, all that information gets sent up to DNA Center and gets correlated with assurance. Somewhere, somebody much smarter than I am came up with this idea and said, hey, you know what? We've had Technical Assistance Center or TAC for 30 years. They see all the issues that happen and then they find ways to fix them. And there's this huge knowledge base. Why don't we take something like that and automate it into a tool so it can automatically give us remediation steps and, and guidance on how to fix these issues. That's literally where assurance came from. So the flow from a troubleshooting perspective would be instead of having to find out, you know, and jump from all these devices of what happened last Tuesday at three o'clock, assurance just gives us the capability of knowing exactly what happened last, last Tuesday at three o'clock. So how that actually works, if you look, we can see there's a couple things you can see on the screen, like the overall network health, you can see how the health is for all the wired clients and the wireless clients. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see some of the top 10 issues that are causing impact to your environment, which is all awesome. And it, it's great. And it's very important information. But one of the things I want to walk you through a real live use case of how you would troubleshoot something. Again, traditionally in the past, you get a help desk ticket where somebody comes up behind you and says something's not working. And then you spend 20 minutes on the phone with a, with a user saying, you know, can you log into the CLI and tell me what your IP address is or what your MAC address is? And you're walking them through how to do, you know, their their IP config and all this other information. And that takes time, you know, sometimes 10, 15 minutes, depending on who you're talking with. Um, so how do we change that? If, if you look at this, we have on the top right corner, we have a little magnifying glass. We click it. We now have the ability to specifically search for a user just by typing their name in. This is very powerful. So this gives us this information one of two different ways. It ties in through the wireless LAN controller and gets all that information through there, as well as this thing can tie into Active Directory. So you, you have the ability to search for a bunch of things, as well as ICE, or Identity Services Engine, for those who are not familiar with it. So I basically just typed in part of a username, and it'll pre-populate out as you're typing. So it looks like Daphne is the user that we're going to pick on today. If we click on Daphne, It'll bring us over to her view. And I keep moving this video around, so bear with me. What you'll see when the screen comes up is that I can do a 360 degree view of Daphne and all the devices that she has currently on the network today with one click of a button. I just typed in her name and hit enter. That was basically all I did. So looking at this screen right now, we can see a few things instantly. She has an iPad, she has an iPhone, and she has a PC. Of those, the PC is doing great. Uh, it has a health score of 10. The other ones, maybe not so much. You know, my, right now her iPad has a health score of 6 out of 10. So if you look at the screen right in the dead center, we can see there's something going on between, you know, about 3 o'clock and 8 p.m. If you click on this, it gives you all the information as you hover across of what's going on. And it might be a little hard to see, but every one of these little green squares at the very bottom, like I'm hovering over one now, is where something is working. And every red box is where something has failed in that time frame. In this particular case, you can see that there's something going on with onboarding. It says that it's failed. The client health at this particular time was two. So maybe you want to find out what happened again, maybe last Tuesday. Assurance gives us this capability of having something called network time travel. And it is literally as cool as it sounds. In the past, you'd have to go and search all over the network and through logs and all this information to try to figure out what happened. With Assurance, because it's collecting all that telemetry data and all that information from your devices, it just tells you. At 2 o'clock on whatever time or whatever date, this is exactly what happened. And the other part that's neat is that if you double-click, it, it'll, it'll bring it into a specific window. So you can see that the a number of issues decreased when I, when I brought it into that particular window. This is, this is changing the way we troubleshoot. So I just, in a, in a second, clicked the thing saw the different types of issues that they have, and maybe I'll pick on one of these and I'll click it. This tells you exactly what happened in that period of time with the issue that Daphne was facing at that particular second. The client took a long time to connect because there was RF issues, and it tells you exactly what was going on. If you scroll up, you can see a few things like the impact of the last occurrence. 
In this case, luckily, it only impacted one building and it only impacted one client, which was Daphne. But if that impacted five buildings or, you know, 350 clients or 1,000 clients, it'll tell you immediately. And as you scroll up a little bit more, you get these what we call suggested actions. Again, this is the intelligence and the correlation that was put in the system by things like tech. You know, check whether the client has moved during an authentication phase, all these different things. When you're talking about RF issues, most of the time, you know, it's something going on in the spectrum and you can't necessarily see it without having something that monitors your network. And again, that's another good point of where assurance comes in. So if I keep scrolling down, you see so much information on this page. Remember, all I did was type in a username, click enter, and I have all this information. I can see how Daphne's iPad is connecting to the corporate SSID. If I want more information on the iPad, I can hover right over it. It gives me the IP address information, things like that. You can see that it then connects to this access point that has three different clients on it just by looking at it. I know there's three other clients running on this access point, and this wireless LAN con uh, controller here has 32 clients. And if you keep scrolling, you can see all the different information of the events of what happened. Those are those green dots and red dots that we saw at the top on the timeline. It just gives you a more succinct view and you can dive into each thing seeing exactly what happened, like the authentication failed because of an EAP timeout. If you keep scrolling down, there's something in here called path trace. And we talk about why this makes life easier for a network engineer. What was, what was the traditional thing you would have to do? Again, you'd have to log into the wireless devices and all these switches, do all these commands, and then keep hopping around to figure out what happened, right? And that takes time. What if, what if I told I can click a button and in the time it took you to log in with your credentials on the first device, I can have a view of the entire network and see exactly what happened. You run something called a path trace. In this case, we're going to go from Daphne's device. Because I went on Daphne automatically, it pre-populates her device in there first. And maybe we're going to pick on a John's PC, for example. And we click Start. That's it. That quick. That quick. That quick, we have Daphne's computer talking to this wireless device. It shows you all the switches in the path, the LAN controller. We can see here that there might be an issue with an access list on this device. If you hover over that, it literally tells you that there's an access list 120 denying something on this switch. If we click it, it gives us more detail. We can see that there's a deny access list that's blocking IP any any on that screen. Let me get back on back to it. So with a click of a button, we know why there's issues. In this particular case, talking to John's computer, it, it's because there's an access list blocking it. So not only is there issues going on with uh, you know, EAP configurations and things like that from authentication perspective, if Daphne wanted to talk specifically to John, we can click a path trace and immediately know that there might be something blocking it or causing an issue. And it highlights it in red when there's a problem. If you just noticed, it refreshes. So it'll automatically refresh. I believe it's every 10 to 30 seconds it'll refresh and show if anything's changed or not, just because I've already launched that path trace. And then this other thing that is very new, this is, we just came out, it's out of beta now, but it's called application experience. So how many times have you had the CIO come up behind you and say, you know, the application, you know, exchange or something like that isn't working right. We're having problems and people are complaining. It happens all the time. But unfortunately, without going and searching through packet captures and all this different stuff, because you're looking at the network and like the network's fine, man. It looks totally fine. Without going through all that, you have to rely on the fact that it's not the application to assume that there's something going on with the network. Because, again, it's always guilty and proven, until proven innocent, right? Not anymore. So right here, I can click on Office 365. It has a health score of two, which is horrible, right? And this is across your campus. So this, and we, as you mentioned, this is all campus related stuff. It has a health score of two. It's, it's absolutely horrible. It's unacceptable. And the source of that application is coming out of this particular site, in this case, San Jose Building 1. If you click it, we get information that we, I mean, you never would have had this information this quick of a click. You can see the throughput, if there's packet loss, if there's network latency. But look at this, application server latency. You can see right across that there's something going on in the application server. That quick, you just proved that it wasn't a network. I mean, that's invaluable when it comes to network engineers. And if you hover over these different things, it correlates it across all the different boxes at once, so you don't have to try to search and figure out what exactly is going on. The other thing that makes it really neat is if you scroll up, this issue is impacting eight clients. Just like that, you know. 
Eight clients. Daphne's iPad happens to be one of them. So I know I threw a lot at you right there, at least from the uh, application experience perspective and, and assurance, but I wanted to know if there's if anybody has any questions, and then if not, I'll, I'll dive into some a little bit more. So this was this was interesting. So I've, I've heard a ton about assurance and some of the pieces and, and seen bits of it. I think this is the best assurance demo and use case I've seen before, and I can definitely see the value um, that, this, that this would bring to troubleshooting. So I, I, I don't have any specific questions. I'm, I'm super impressed that this stuff's there. Um, I'll let David, uh, Mr. Cynical Network Engineer, any any questions, any uh, any feedback on what Jason's kind of walked us through here? Does this seem like, can you see some value in this as it goes through? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's, um, the thing is, I, th I think Cynical Network Engineer, too many years of experience, um, often, it's felt that Cisco have let network management and this kind of stuff behind compared to like CLI. Um, and CL, everyone's trusted the CLI, but I think this gives me a lot more um, confidence that this is gonna help me as a network guy. Um, I'm assuming, Jason, that the protocol that, that, that we're using, and I don't wanna hop on that, it's just to try and understand this. We're using SNMP to pull a lot of MIB information, information out of the, out of the devices, and what's really cool in this product is you could use netconf to configure the devices, or even just CLI to configure them if you need to make changes. But yeah, the, I, 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 I'm impressed. So again, you know, because you know we were listening to our customers and trying to figure out a way to make sure that we get them what they need to be able to be successful, that's where this whole concept was dreamed up with assurance. Um, you know, and it's not a new thing. I mean, obviously we've had tetration in the data center. We have all these different capabilities. There's certain things in the, in the service provider we've had for a long time, but we needed it in the campus and we needed it bad. Um, there, there's a lot of pieces to, to assurance that we didn't even go through that just, this, this kind of just scratches the surface. If you can think about predictive analytics. Now we, we, we were, we had the ability to go back in time. You know, we, we can go back and see what happened in the past without having to figure out what the issue is. So instead of having to replicate the issue, which most customers have to do, we know what the issue is. We can just go back in time and see that it was a problem with maybe DHCP onboarding or uh, the scope ran out of IP addresses or something to that matter, right? We can also do things in the future. So we have something called um, wireless sensors. So I'm going to click on this just you know, at a high level real quick. I want to go through it. If you think about it, you know, when you're a wireless user, you kind of have to, you know, you're at, you're at the, um, you're at the risk of what's going on in your wireless spectrum. So if somebody's microwaving something with an old microwave next to you, you might not be able to get onto the wireless network, right? Uh, it's just, it just happens. Um, with a wireless sensor, we created this thing that it's about the size of a deck of playing cards. And what it gives us is the ability to put these sensors out in the environment and it acts just like a wireless client. So they're, they're relatively cheap. You put them out in, in your environment and it will act as a wireless client. So a, a good use case might be, you wanna make sure that the CEO is, has the best experience that, that they could possibly have in their office. Maybe they're having a big boardroom meeting coming up soon and you wanna make sure that that's gonna be okay. You could put a wireless sensor in that, in that environment and then it will run all kinds of different tests that you can figure out. You can configure them. You can pick any type of test you want. It can run DNS. It can run all kinds of wireless spectrum stuff, onboarding, you name it. Maybe I wanted to have it go and check a specific website to make sure that it's constantly active. You can have that do that from a wireless perspective. And by doing that, you get all kinds of information because now essentially what you did was you just created a client sitting on the network and you took the client's view of what's going on in wireless and you put it into assurance. And traditionally in the past, when we're troubleshooting, we're not necessarily troubleshooting it from the client's view as much as we want to. We'd love to be able to replicate it, but we really can't. We have to troubleshoot from the wireless controller perspective and I can see what signal I'm giving it, but I couldn't see what was going on from the client's perspective unless I had that client with me. Now we have that capability of doing that. We run all these different tests. So you can see that we, we've created this test called fabric sensor test. It runs on this SSID and we can see right here real quick what's going on. There's obviously something going on with onboarding, slow response times, onboarding's failed, whether it could get IP addressing or not, DNS, was it working, was it not working, could it re reach the web server, whatever it might be. You have the ability to just build all that. And it's really quick and easy to do. 
So now you're thinking about things in the future where you can say, I want to make sure that this room has the RF environment that it needs to have because I'm going to be planning a big board meeting or something like that. As well as the fact that you mentioned WAN earlier, Hank, you, you, you started talking about, you know, the campus also including the WAN. You have the capability with this to look at and monitor MPLS links and, and transit links that are your provider links. So if you, if you knew something was going to go down, you have the ability to have it open tickets. You have the ability to say, well, I know that this WAN link is going to be maximized at the end of next week based on all the trending that I'm seeing. So then you, you might know that, you know, in 24 hours, you're going to have to move traffic around either using things like SD-WAN or, or whatnot, or maybe you have finally gotten to the point over time that you've, you've passed the threshold that you want. You might want to order a bigger link. So you have that capability. And again, traditionally, if you were a network engineer and you had to go through figuring all this stuff out, it takes hours, it takes days, depending on what the issue is. And then how do you do that and your day-to-day -day job at the same time every day? Right. It, it got it. This is literally this platform is designed to help the network engineers make their lives just easier. And, you know, I had a full head of hair when I started this. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> with without assurance, uh, it my, my forehead turned into a five head and it kind of just kept going. Um, but uh, but now we have assurance. So I'm hoping that, you know, I won't get wrinkles or anything like that. So we'll see. It's quite a paradigm shift. I think that's the big thing. You know, it's. Um, sure. We got to trust this to to do what we would traditionally have done ourselves, but I, I mean I can see the potential. It's it's amazing that I mean you were able to troubleshoot a, an issue so quickly, and you could go back in time. And it's really nice that you can you know do these future things as well. So I mean Hank, I don't I, let me know if you got any questions. But Jason, I wanted to get to the point now. Like okay, so this looks really cool. Is there a way to 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 is there a demo on on DevNet or is there something, a lab or something that I can access if I want to get my hands dirty and play with it? Actually, I'm so glad you said that. Um, this demo that I'm using right now is completely open and available to the public, and I'm going to show you how to get there real quick. If you go to cisco.com, if I can type it right, I've only worked here for six years. I, <laughs> I just don't know if I can type it right. <laughs> if you go to Cisco's home website, there's a menu right here on the left. If you click it, just based on the screen, if you hover over here under networking, this says Assure Network Availability and Performance. If you click this, it brings you to a DNA Center Assurance and, uh, Analytics landing page. And right up here, there's a little button that says See Demos. If you click on that demo, it gives you this landing page. Now, in the landing page, you have all kinds of different information. There's a, there's a podcast with Jim Grubb, who's our CTO, about DNA Center with Assurance. There's self-guided uh, click-through demos you can go through. Uh, here you might see a recognizable face doing uh, DNA Center videos as far as what it all means, how it all works together, how it collects the telemetry data and information like that. And then if you click over here on the right, this is literally the instant demo we just used. This will bring you to another page that tells you exactly how to log in with this demo. Uh, there's a demo guide you can use. This is the link that I was just using. And then here's the login information as well. Now, as we move forward, there'll be more expanded demos. So you'll start seeing SDA, SD-WAN. All these will have demo now buttons just like this. Um, but we're working on that uh, today. That's part of what I do during the day. <laughs> is the, So this is brilliant. Is there a like a demo version that I can try in my in my environment or like a like a 30-day trial or something? So yes and no, um, because it's, it's an appliance, right? So this is just a demo within... Uh, what we call dcloud our demo environment yeah in order to have assurance in your environment we have to do what we call a prescriptive pov and there's no cost to it but the the idea is we bring out what we call a pov kit which essentially includes the real catalyst 9000 series switches and devices so you can physically plug hosts into it and and work with them and then it vpns back into dcloud to run an instance of dna center and ice and all those other you know appliances that are in the cloud so you don't have to worry about instantiating it instantiating it so yes there is but you have to go work with your account team in order to get that to be put into your environment that's okay but i mean it's great that you've got an online um online demo that anyone can access and just you know learn about the product um another question so hank touched on this last week um, um apec em was a product and it's still in the ccna so i'm going to mention it because guys who are doing their ccnas 
or studying for CCNA will learn about APEC EM. But this is like the next iteration of that. Is that correct? Because like that trace path thing, I remember specifically being mentioned in CCNA courses. So so think of that on steroids. And the reason I bring that up is they, they brought over a lot of stuff from APEC EM as far as the features go. Uh, Easy QoS came over, but now it's called application policy because you can do so much more with it. Um, but those those things like path trace and all that they they came over, but they completely rearchitected the entire platform and made it agile so we can update it more frequently and do all these different things that we couldn't do before when it was APIC. But the con- conceptually the idea is the same, right? We we wanted a controller, we wanted to be able to use it to do everything, both from configuration automation all the way to assuring your network. So that's that's the realization of what uh, DNA Center became. But yes, it is. It is similar in the sense, and it's like the next generation or reiteration of, so to speak. That's great. Um, Hank, I'm, I'm hogging the questions. Have you got a question? Otherwise, I'm going to ask about northbound APIs. No, no. I, I think that we're, we're doing good, and we're, we're kind of running to the, the end of this point, and there's, there's still a lot that we could dive into. I'd love to quiz Jason at some yeah. point on things like the, the SDA model and some of these new fabric pieces that are there, but I don't know if we've got enough time to squeeze in today. Um, Jason, maybe come back for another follow-up video where we can talk about some of these other pieces and then we can we can maybe hone in and, and close down for today. I, I would love to. Yeah, that's brilliant. Jason, thanks so much for coming on the call. Sorry, Hank, I'm over-talking you again with this delay today. Yeah, that's the, the, the joy of these, these large calls. We've got Chicago, uh, Illinois in the States, Ohio in the States, and then you're, uh, of course, over in Oxford in the UK. So... Yeah, we, we bear with it. But um, I was going to ask, David, before we actually did the official close, did you have any final questions for Jason or, or pieces to go through on that? No, Jason, I think the, the only thing I'd like to say is thanks, you know, for spending time with us today and, you know, taking the grilling. Um, it's always nice, you know, to talk to another technical person and get the technical answers. Um, and I'd really like more calls if you have time for that. Um because I think there's a lot of interest in this in this in, in this product, and that said, anyone who's watching this, guys, please uh, comment on Twitter, um, um, comment below this video if you want to learn more. Give us your questions. And Jason, on that topic, do you have any like ways that guys can contact you? Yeah, certainly. So I'm on Twitter at, at Jason underscore Gooley, and connect with me on LinkedIn too as well. Um, I usually answer all the messages that I get, so I'm I'm pretty available. That's great. Hank, you, you, you do the final wrap up. Sure thing. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on this kind of deeper dive into DNA and DNA Center, Cisco's enterprise controller management platform. Uh, Jason was kind enough to come in and kind of start to peel back some of the layers of the onion here, but there's so much more. So I would say keep a lookout for future videos where we're going to dive into topics. And as always, if you do have specific questions, be sure to let us know either on comments on YouTube or over on Twitter or any of those places. And we'll see you in the next one.